In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these awesome transitions between scenes, so let's go. All right, I have a very simple project set up with three scenes. None of them have a script attached yet, they're all just scenes with sprites. So let's make our first script. Right click on your res folder, create new script. This is going to be our transition manager. Press enter. Now we want that to be in auto load, so go to your project settings. In the auto load tab, click the file icon and select that transition manager script that we just made. Press add, close. Now open the transition manager. Inside of the transition manager script, let's create a setup sprite function. For this, we're going to want to take a screenshot of the screen automatically and then use that to show it flying away. So let's make a new scene. This one is going to be a sprite 2D. Name this Transition Sprite, and save it. I'll use the default location. First, let's load in that sprite. So we'll say var transition sprite is equal to load, and then it should have the autocomplete for you. So we want the transition sprite.tscn. Now to take a screenshot, we can say var image is equal to git viewport dot git texture dot git image that takes a screenshot and now let's create the image texture so this gives us an image but we want an image texture so for that we can say var transition texture is equal to image texture dot create from image and then we pass in that image we just created now we already created transition sprite but just in case later on we change that name, we don't want our transition manager to mess up. So we'll go ahead and set the name in here as well. Let's use a constant. Let's call this const transition node name and set that equal to a transition node or transition sprite, whatever you prefer. And let's set the name of our sprite. We'll say transition sprite dot name is equal to transition node name. Now let's set the texture. So that texture that we created, we'll say transition sprite dot texture is equal to transition texture. Now we can return this. Let's say return transition sprite. Now let's add a function to change our scene using the transition that we're creating. We'll call this func change scene. We want to provide this the new scene location or the new scene name, but we're providing the file location. I'm going to call it new scene location. That's a string. And we can also provide the transition type. For now, we'll make that an integer. Now, we don't want to have overlapping transitions. So what we can do, we can have a global state on our transition manager to check if we're already playing a transition, then don't play another one. So at the top, we can have a variable var is showing transition and set that equal to false because by default, we're not showing a transition. Then back inside of change scene, we want to check if we is showing transition, then don't run this. So we'll just say return. But if that was false, which is the case when we get to here, we can say, oh yeah, we're starting to play a transition now. So we can say is showing transition is true. Now let's get the sprite using the function that we created earlier. So we can say a var transition sprite is equal to setup sprite. Now we'll use the built-in way to change our scene. So we'll say git tree dot change scene to file and then we want to provide the new scene location so currently it's going to instantly change scenes but we don't want that we want it to show our animation so what we can do let's make a function which is going to actually show the transition as it's changing the scene so let's go down here we'll come back to that other function in a little bit let's call this func show transition for later on we have to add in a underscore new node parameter, but we won't actually use this. It's because we're going to be calling this with a signal. So it's required, but we don't use it here. We also want to provide this the transition sprite that we're using. Remember, that's a sprite 2D. And we also want the type of transition, which will be an integer. Now let's check if there's already a transition node in the scene. And if there is, then don't do anything. So we can say if get tree dot root dot get node or null. If we already have the transition node name, so if it's not equal to null, then just don't run this. We don't need to show transition if there's already a transition running. 
But if we get to this point, then there's no transition running. So let's add one to the scene. Get tree dot root dot add child. You want to add in that transition sprite that was passed into this function. Now to create the animation, let's use a tween for that. So we can say var transition tween is equal to create tween dot set parallel. This is going to make it so that we can do multiple animations running at once. Remember, tweens just let us create animations easily. Let's start by making just one animation. So we'll say transition tween dot tween property. And then we want to change properties on the transition sprite. And the property that we want to change is the scale. And the final value is going to be a very small size. We'll just say a vector 2 of 0 0.01. Use that for both the x and y. And we want this to happen over the course of one second. Once the animation finishes, we want to get rid of this node. So we'll say transition tween dot finished. This is a signal that happens. So we can connect a function to that. We'll say dot connect. We want to connect the transition sprite dot q free. This just deletes a node when it's done. Make sure you don't include the parentheses at the end that it knows to call this function when it's done. Let's wait for the tween to finish. For that, we can say await transition tween dot finished. So the function is going to pause on this line until the transition has finished. Once it's finished, we can say is showing animation is false. Now let's scroll back up to our change scene function. So we're going to want to show this transition. Because of the way that things work when you change scene to file, the order is a little bit weird. So we can't just call this directly after or it won't work correctly. Instead, we have to wait for the signal saying that, yeah, we changed files. And then we have to disconnect it when we're done. So let's scroll to the top. Let's make a new variable at the top here. This is going to be var function to call. This is going to be a callable. Callable is basically a function that already has its parameters provided, but we just haven't called it yet. Let's assign to this variable inside of change scene. Let's say function to call is equal to show transition. That's the function that we made down here. So to give it some arguments, we can say dot bind. We want to provide it the transition sprite and the type because we're going to connect this to a signal. The first one will automatically be provided. So let's give it the transition sprite and the transition type. Now we can say get tree dot node added. So when that signal happens, let's connect up our function to call. Now let's test this out. Let's go to the bottom. Let's make the process function, the built-in. Now from any script anywhere, you could just call the change scene, provide the path location. But for this example, I'm going to provide that in this same script. So for example, I'll just use the normal input dot is action just pressed. And I'll use one of the built-ins here. I'll use UI accept, that's pressing enter, transition manager dot change scene. For now, I'm going to drag over main 2, and I'll just provide transition 1. We haven't made any alternate transitions, but we can do that in a little bit. At the end of the transition sprite line, we forgot some stuff. Let's say dot instantiate. This will create an instance, and we can also say it's a sprite 2D, just to make our autocomplete happy. Let's try running the game. So I'm going to switch over to main 1, run the game, select the current scene. If I press enter, there we go. But if we write again, we currently get some errors. So let's fix that. The errors say it already has the transition callable. So we need to disconnect it at the end. Above where we said is showing transition, let's add in get tree dot node added. So remember, that's the same signal we were talking about up here. But this time we want to disconnect the function to call. Let's run this now. If I press enter, there we go. Of course, we currently only switch to main 2, so it's just going to transition into itself, but that seems to work. We can go ahead and add in some other transitions if we want. Some of my preferred things to do for this current one, we can say transition tween dot set trans. This is going to be like the graph that it follows quickly in or exit quickly, that sort of thing. One that I like is transcubic. If we run that one, you can see it kind of zooms out. Let's go ahead and use this type that we provided to make this clean. Let's make an enum at the top. We can say enum transition type. Remember, enums just let you store multiple values that are similar to each other. 
For that first one, we can call it zoom out. Set that equal to one. The next one I'm going to make is flying off to the side in a spiral. So I'll call that swipe right. For the last one that falls down, I'll just call it fall down. So let's copy that name in our transition function where we have the word type. Instead of int, let's provide a transition type for that. We can add the check here. If type is equal to transition type dot zoom out, then we can run those two lines. We can also check here if type is equal to transition type dot swipe right. I'm going to copy this line because it's a lot of repeated. Let's copy and paste that in. For this one, we change the global position. And for the position to move to, I want to go to 1800 and negative 400. The position might be different for your game. I'll keep the time as one second. We also want to change the rotation for this one. So again, I'm going to copy paste that. Instead of global position, this will be the rotation. For the final rotation, I'm going to use deg to rad. This converts degrees to radians. So I want to convert 180 degrees to radians because this function takes radians as an argument. And for the last one, let's check if the type is equal to transition type dot fall down. Let's set the speed that this one goes away at. So we can say transition tween dot set trans. For this one, I like to use trans expo. We're going to set the global position. So I'm going to copy that line, paste it down here. For the final position, I want to go to x of zero, but we want to go to 800. Because remember, increasing y goes down when working with Godot. Let's set up the inputs to use different transitions. This is a hacky way to do it. You would probably do this a different way in your game. Again, you could do this transition manager dot change scene inside of whatever scene you want because it's a global. Let's change UI accept to instead be UI up and we can say it transition type dot zoom out. Let's go ahead and set up the other ones as well for UI right. That's the right arrow key. We can say it transition type dot swipe right. And the last one we can have UI down make that one fall down. Let's also change which scene we transition to. First I want to go to main 2, then main 3, then back to main 1. Let's run this now. So if I press up, if I press right, it seems to work. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Join the Discord. Other than that, thanks for watching.